Good morning, everybody. Morning. Praise the Lord. We will worship Jesus. He is worthy. Ooh, he is King. He is Lord. It's all about Jesus, man. Ah, let's bow our hearts. And give thanks to the Lord and ask Him to have His way in us, to change us, fill us with hope. Oh Lord, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Lord, for being with us. Thank you so much for saving us, for giving us freedom, for forgiving us of all of our sins. Thank you so much for giving us resurrection life, eternal life, everlasting life in you. Thank you so much for this relationship that we can have with you, Lord. Ooh. Bring in our hearts, bring in our mind that it would be fixed on you, Lord. Help us to live that way, Lord. Help us to live with our eyes on you alone, Lord. When the trials come, help us to recognize that the trials is the testing of our faith, Lord. Mahalo for the testing, Lord. Mahalo for testing us, Lord. Ooh. Mahalo for caring so much for us. Giving us nourishment. Watering us, Lord, that we may grow into all that you have for us, Lord. Oh Lord, mahalo Lord that you said count it all joy because when the trials come they produce endurance and this endurance got to grow and you said when this endurance grows we come to one point where we no need nothing we are complete and full and made whole in you Oh Lord Help us, Lord, as we praise you, as we honor you, as we worship you, as we seek you, as we place our trust in you this morning. You inspire us, Lord. Just fill us with your song, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, church. Huh? Oh, God is awesome, God. So you can stand or sit, whatever. You worship the Lord, God. Don't be shaming, guys. Be bold, God. Let your praises be bold for Jesus, God. Praise. Praise in you, heavens and all that's above. Praise in you, angels and heavenly hosts. Let the whole earth praise him. Praise in the sun, moon, and bright shining stars. Praise in you heavens and waters and signs. Let the whole earth praise him. Good evening. All that 
heights above, praising you, angels and heavenly hosts. Let the whole earth praise him. He is worthy. A place in the sun, moon, and bright shining stars. Praise him, you heavens and waters and skies. Let the whole earth praise him. that we used to have full of hopelessness Lord, and fear and worry but your eyes Lord, your kingdom the truth Lord victory victory is in you Lord. Mm. yes sir Come on, the God who saves us 
worthy of all our praises. Hosanna, Hosanna, come have your way among us. We welcome you here, Lord Jesus. Yes, I We turn to you. Oh, you and Jesus, you and Lord. In your kingdom, broken lives are made new. Lord, you make us new. Because when we see you, we find strength to face the day. In your presence, all our fears are washed away. They're washed away. Hosanna, Hosanna. You are the God who saves us, worthy of all our praises. Hosanna. Hosanna, come have your way among us, we welcome you here, Lord Jesus. Cause when we see you, we find strength to face the day. In your presence, all our fears are washed away. When we see you, we find strength to face the day. And in your presence, all our fears are washed away. Washed away. Hosanna. Hosanna. Come of the God who saves us. Worthy of all our praises, Hosanna, Hosanna, come have your way among us, we welcome you here, Lord Jesus, Hosanna, Hosanna. God who saves us, worthy of all our praises. Hosanna, Hosanna, come out your way among us. We welcome you here, Lord Jesus. You're the God, yes, you are the God who saves us. Worthy of all our praises, yes, you are the God who saves us. Worthy of all our praises. Amen. Amen, church. Don't fix your eyes on anything else but Jesus, God. <laughs> oh, God, God is so good, church. He is so good, man. God, you are awesome. You are amazing. You are powerful and great and strong and mighty. Your love is powerful, Lord. Your love is powerful. You endured it all. All the suffering. Oh, Lord. Your love is great. Ooh, your love gives us freedom, Lord. Freedom from shame. Freedom from fear. Freedom from worry, Lord. Your love, Lord. Our God. 
in whom all things was created, you give your life for each and every one of us, Lord. Your thoughts for all of us, all of the green of sand. Oh, mahalo, love. Yes. Your grace mahalo. love mahalo. us mahalo. like rain, love. Mahalo, love. Jesus, he's the leader. Amen. God, the, the Holy One. Cool. Take heart, church. Take heart. Be encouraged by the Lord. How deep the Father's heart. Beyond all measure, and he should give his only son to make a wretch his treasure. How great the pain of searing loss! The father turned his face away. His wounds which mar the chosen one bring many sons to glory behold behold the man upon the cross my sin upon his shoulders ashamed I hear my mocking voice out among the scoffers It was my sin that held him there Until it was accomplished His dying breath has brought me life I know that it is finished I boast in anything No gifts, no power, no wisdom But I will boast in Jesus Christ His death and resurrection Why should I gain from His reward? I cannot give an answer, but this I know with all my heart. His wounds have paid my ransom, but this I know with all my heart. Father's love for us How vast beyond all measure That he should give his only son To make a wretch his treasure How deep the Father's love for us Beyond all measure That he should give his only son To make a wretch his treasure How deep the Father's love for us How vast beyond all measure 
that he should give his only son to make a wretch his treasure that he should give his only son to make a wretch his treasure should give his only son to make a wretch his treasure. Amen. Oh, church, don't be afraid of nothing, Bob. Afraid of all things. Is with you and for you, God. Who can be against you, God? Who oh, conquer us? Wickedness come, conquer on us. Father, your love is deep, Lord. Deeper than the ocean, Lord. Higher than the sky, the heavens, Lord. Beyond our measure is your love, Lord. That you will send Jesus, your Son, the only begotten, the unique one. The Word who was there with you, Father, in the beginning, Lord, who became flesh, Lord, sending Him to make us, Lord, people who sin and turn from you and chase after other things, make us your treasure, Lord, who your treasure, who, brothers and sisters, hear the voice of the Lord, God, hear His still small voice. Give his promises, God. The Lord has given us all these promises that we may experience his divine nature, God. We get to experience God. Yeah, first Peter, huh? we get to participate in God's divine nature because of his promises he gave us. Ooh, eternal life in you, God. Oh, yes, our church. Amen. How you guys doing, huh? Good. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, church. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Yes, sir. All right. Continue to sing to the Lord, Bob. Sing to the Lord. You are my king. Make Jesus the king of your life, Bob. Let him rule. No rule anymore, church. Let him rule. Forsaken, I'm accepted. You were condemned. I'm alive and well. The Spirit is within me. You died and rose again. I'm forgiven because you were forsaken. I'm accepted. You were condemned. I'm alive and well. The Spirit is within me because you died and rose again. Amazing love, how can it be that you, my King, should die for me? Amazing love, I know it's true, and it's my joy to wander you in all I do. I honor you in all I do. I honor you. I'm forgiven. Because you were forsaken, I'm accepted, you were condemned. I'm alive and well, the Spirit is within me, because you died and rose again. Amazing love, how can it be? 
you, my King, should die for me. Amazing love, I know it's true. And it's my joy to wander you in all I do. I honor you in all I do. I honor you. Jesus, you are my king. You are my king. Jesus, you are my king. Jesus, you. Are my king, Jesus, you 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 are my king. Amazing love, how can it be that you, my King, should die for me? Amazing love, I know it's true, and it's my joy to honor you. Amazing love, I know it's true. You, my King, should die for me. Amazing love, I know it's true. And it's my joy to honor you in all I do. I honor you. In all I do, I honor you. Jesus, you are my King. 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 Amen. Overwhelming, that church. Overwhelming, that. Lord, I need you. Lord, 
comes my way when I cannot stand I'll fall on you Jesus you're my hope and stay so teach my song to rise to you when temptation comes my way cannot stand, I'll fall on you. Jesus, you're my hope and stay. seek the Lord, church. Huh? We seek Him, we pray to Him, we obey Him because we need Him. Huh? You know, um, me and the youths, the youths we went to uh, Auntie Linda's, uh, we're going to share some songs, and I got to hang out with Auntie a little bit. And uh, she was Auntie Linda Javier. Oh, yeah, Auntie Linda Javier. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she was just sharing and it was good to hear her and be with her and but one of the things that she said was um you know when the trials come uh, you can either be bitter or better but the trials come uh, the testing come we can either run back to our old ways or we can cling to jesus uh, suffering come uh, suffering come all of us go through suffering we know plenty of people who are true already yeah? And that can either make us go away from God, you know, really do things on our own, find that instant, you know, whatever, but, or we can go to God, you know, and uh, so I just appreciated that, and I just was thinking how true that is, church. Uh, Amen. When that things get tough, uh, just cling even more to Jesus, bro. cling even more to Jesus, bro. Yes. So we go bow our hearts and we go pray for the offering. Continue to worship the Lord. True giving. And we will just trust in the Lord, church. Lord, thank you so much, Lord, for blessing us in so many ways. For letting us know that we don't need worry about food, water, clothing, clothing, all of those things that once dominated our minds. Maybe still do, Lord, though. But Lord, you say, seek your kingdom first, Lord. And all these things will be done. Mahalo, Lord. Mahalo, Lord, for revealing the truth to us. That all that matters is you. 
So bless your people, Lord. Bless all of us as we give unto you. Increase our faith. Increase our passion, our inspiration, our love, love in our hearts. Increase our knowledge, Lord, our wisdom of you. Let's bless your people as they give, Lord. Help us to be, be people that give, Lord. Not just here, but everywhere, Lord. Help us to be like you, Lord. Mahalo for blessing us, Lord, with everything here at Pukanai, Lord. And let us come in this place, this aina, this hale, Lord. These chairs, these tents, Lord. All these things, Lord, you bless us with, Lord. Mahalo, Lord. Help us to continue to use it all for you, Lord. All for your glory, Lord. Oh, mahalo, Lord. For the orchard, for the garden, for the inu. Mahalo, Lord. For all the people helping out, Lord. For all the people who are doing construction, by the flame, blessing, living. For the boots, Lord. Thank you so much, Lord. For everybody helping out. We love you. And now we just praise you. Give you all the glory, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 That is awesome. It's our last song. And then um, we will continue to worship. Get a word. But really cling unto the blood. Man. Be washed by the blood. Man. It's the only way we get righteousness, you guys. Let Jesus wash you clean. Man. Purify your heart.
this is all my hope and peace, nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my righteousness, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Is all my hope and peace, nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my righteousness, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow, oh no, other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus, oh precious is the flow that makes me white as snow, oh, other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. And oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. Other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Yes, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Amen. Church, huh? Praise the Lord, Church. Yeah. Yeah. Remember the story. Jesus rose, huh? And he didn't reveal himself to the disciples in the room. And Brother Thomas, not like BD, but he will show him his scars, huh? And his hands. Yeah, those marks, bound. Those marks that bugger bear for all eternity, reminding us of what Jesus did, huh? He did it once and for all. No need any more, cause Paul, Jesus final. And his blood flow back. Church, stay in, stay in the blood. Bro. Stay there, cause live in there. That Jesus wash you. Bro. Stay in that blood, bro. Don't live on your strength, your power, but the power of Jesus, his blood for us. Oh, church. Just give thanks, church. Give thanks. Put our hearts and give thanks to the Lord, man. You just mahalo, Lord, the Lord, and just worship Him, man. Think about how great our God is, Jesus, who did all this for us, man. shame wash away, Lord. All I feel wash away. You wash us, Lord. And you make us clean. Yeah, Lord. Amen, church. Amen. Alright. Well, we have a few announcements for you today. It is November first, you guys. Wow. I don't know if I'm ready for November, but we're here and um, we're gonna celebrate. Uh, we've got a few things coming up on our calendar. We have a special thing today, and I'll come back to it in just a second. But I wanted to share a few other things. Um, first of all, we have our ladies' craft night or paint night. Sorry, coming up on November 16th at 6 p.m. 
and um, see Auntie Carrie if you would like to join us. I think she's going to have some options for you this time of how you would like to do your paint night. So you can see her for more information. That's at 6 p.m. November 16th. So you have about three weeks. Um, for, I know this isn't pertaining to Pook and Naz, but it was something that I think um, anyone should be invited to. Um, Pastor Ka'il at uh, Kahui Nazarene, he's gonna be leading a, um, I think for six weeks at Hope Chapel in Kihei, he's talking about Christianity in Hawaii. And he has done a lot of research. If you've ever talked to him, especially in the last couple years, it's been on his mind and trying to track down um, some of those important people um, that brought Christianity here and how that impacted Hawaiian. So if that is something interesting to you, I invite you to go to Hope Chapel. I think it's at 6 p.m. Um, let me know, or you can look at Pastor K.O.'s page. I can't remember exactly what time, but I think it's for six weeks. So I think we're gonna try and go. You guys are welcome to come as well. Sounded interesting. And um, I also wanted to say that unfortunately with all of the restrictions and uncertainties and all that, um, we are not able to have our Thanksgiving Igbo this year. Um, we really are excited for next year, and we definitely will need a lot of help next year. But please help us spread the word. A lot of um, the way people know about us is through word of mouth. So if you have friends and family that um, usually come to Pukanas, please let them know. You're going to have to figure out how to cook your turkey in the oven this year. Sorry. <laughs> Or, you know, just not have turkey. Although, is that like sacrilegious? I don't know. You can, I don't know. I'm always down for like ham. I guess that's our family's thing. But um, but anyway, we are not able to have that this year. Um, but we will keep you posted. And we are definitely going to have some youth and um, maybe another, maybe Recovery Church too. We're looking at some fundraisers with Kalua Pig in our fundraising emu. So, you are not going to miss out on the clue of, pig, or clue of flavor. We just won't get to have our big one. So please help us spread the word. Um, we did that, that. Um, I'm not sure if Auntie Benita let me know which um, compassion item this month. So I just chose one. Sorry, Auntie Benita. <laughs> um, but I just asked if you could bring some toothpaste and toothbrushes. I figured everyone can use a toothpaste, use some toothpaste and a toothbrush. <laughs> hopefully, right? <laughs> so um, if that's something that you have extra at your house or you're at Costco, if you could just pick up a couple, we'll put them in our Compassion Ministries shed, which by the way, we are um, consolidating everything into the cottage. So thank you, Aunt Janita. Thank you, Uncle Pat and Bruce and everybody who's been helping and Dylan move everything out of our um, cakey buildings because hopefully we'll get to use those pretty soon. Um, so we're moving all of our storage out, putting it in the cottage. We've got locations um, for our ministries. It looks really good in there, you guys. So um, thank you all who have been moving stuff all week long, all month long. We appreciate you. Um, the we last appreciate thing... you, Jamie. Ah, oh, thanks. <laughs> so speaking of appreciate, we are um, appreciating Pastor Mark today because... He wasn't here during Pastor's Appreciation Month. I think he did that on purpose. <laughs> but um, real quick, I wanted to um, have you come up. I know Auntie Lori's not here right now. She's not feeling well. But if you could come up for a minute, we have a lay for you and something special. All right, Pastor. been here eight years now nine. almost nine. almost nine yeah. so we're so thankful for you thank you for your leadership yes and for the past appreciation this year we would like to cover your family's flights for um, your vacation that you just took and so we're so thankful for you thankful for your family and we're just glad you came back Thank you for all that you do 
all that we see and all that we don't see. So thank you. And Nancy Laurie too. She does a lot as well. Yes. Can we say anything? Sure. Yeah. Speech. Speech. <laughs> but not too long because I'm speaking. Yeah. We we appreciate all of you guys and every day um, we count our blessings that we're able to serve this church and this community and it's just amazing. God is amazing. Yeah. So he would call somebody like us to uh, be able to serve him and help build the kingdom here. And each one of you matter. Each one of you are wonderful people and we love you guys. And I know, you know, sometimes we fail. Sometimes we don't live up to expectations, but God's grace is, a, is sufficient. Yeah. And so thank all of you guys. Thank you guys on Facebook that aren't able to be here today. And we love you guys and look forward to the next nine years. Yeah. All right. And if you don't know, you probably know, we are having a lunch after um, this service, so please hang around. And if you can jump in and um, help move around chairs and tables, that'd be great. I wanted to give one last um, appreciation to um, Pastor Tom. You mind coming up real quick, Pastor Tom? I know, he yeah, thought he got, he, he thought he was done with this. <laughs> I know, we, we acknowledged him already, but I wanted to give you something special as well. First of all, I want to give you a lay. So thank you so much for your faithfulness to Shehe Ministries and um, you and Auntie Carrie. You guys do a lot more than we ever see. So we, we appreciate what you do. And... Um, this has been a long time coming, actually, <laughs> um, but we have finally got a place for you guys to store all of your ministry belongings <laughs> instead of your house. And so in the, key, in the um, cottage, not only the space, but also there are now shelves, there are now tubs um, for you and empty carry. And we have some people that have volunteered to help you bring all of that up here so that you can actually have a living space at your house. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you for all that you do. Okay, are you tired of my voice yet? Um, I'll be sharing the word today. I'm going to grab my Bible. Do you want, are you going to use that mic or do you want to use this one? Oh, I can use that one. You might want to use the other mic too, because they might, I think Facebook can hear you, but. I feel so fancy. So girls don't get pockets. No. <laughs> All right. So I wanted to open with um, some scripture with you today. So if you have your um, Bible, we are going to open to John chapter 13. John chapter 13. It's so good to see everyone here today. All right, John chapter 13. And we're going to be in verses 1 through 17, that first passage. So if you're there, um, I'm reading out of the NIV, so yours might look a little different, but that's okay. We are all reading from John 13. All right, and this is about, um, this is a passage that if you've been in the church a while, you probably have heard. Um, it's about when Jesus washes the feet of his disciples. So this is how it goes. It was just before the Passover feast. Jesus knew that the time had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he now showed them the full extent of his love. The evening meal was being served, and the devil had already prompted Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God. 
So he got up from the mule, took off, of, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin, and he began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that had been wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you do not understand what I'm doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, well, unless I wash you, you will have no part of me. Then Lord, Peter said, not just my feet, then my hands and my head as well. That was always Peter going full out. <laughs> Jesus answered, a person who has had a bath needs only to wash his feet. His whole body is clean. And you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him, and that was why he said not everyone was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I've done for you? He asked. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you should also wash one another's feet as um, I have set for you an example that you should do as I have done for you. I tell you the truth, no servant is greater than his master, nor a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. The word of the Lord. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you so much for this moment of being together, of studying your word together. Lord, just learning about you more together. Whether we're online or in person, we're here together. And um, we just pray that this time would be used for you and that um, we would, we would um, continue to um, strive to be like you, that we would listen to your word and that we would obey and do it faithfully. Amen. 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 All right, well, I was thinking, um, you know, today is an appropriate day for a pastor's appreciation. Does anyone else know what today is? November 1st? All Saints Day. All right. Does anyone know what All Saints Day is? The one before. All the Saints. Yep. <laughs> All Saints, of course. <laughs> and so um, this is a special time. Um, it depends on which church you're in. Not every church recognizes it or, or celebrates it. And, and we're in a church that it's okay if you do, it's okay if you don't. Um, Nazarenes are kind of middle in the road folks. And so we, um, I just wanted to bring that up today because I thought it was appropriate, especially for pastor's appreciation and for um, the day that it fell on. <laughs> um, I, I think it's time for us to, a good day for us to, sorry, my, I'm all over the place today. <laughs> um, I think it's a good day to recognize those who have been faithful. And um, that's what All Saints Day is all about. It's recognizing um, saints that are well known, but also some obscure ones. And I took that liberally and just said anyone who is like Christ that we look up to are examples. And so there's people all from, from the Bible. So we have Paul, the disciples. Um, we have people um, in our um, Christian past, our um, Wesleyan heritage that we look up to, Martin Luther, we look up to John Wesley, we look up to Phineas Brzee, we look up to Phoebe Palmer, we look up to Dietrich Bonhoeffer, all of these theologians that have kind of helped form the faith tradition that we follow here at Pukanaz. We look up to even Father Damien here in Hawaii, his sacrifice, his, his unconditional love, his faithfulness to what God called him to do, even though it claimed his life. We look up to people like Mother Teresa, and Martin Luther King, uh, Ravi Zacharias, and even um, some of our own general superintendents I look up to are David Busick, we have um, Carla Sundberg. These are people that help form who we are. They form, um, they help us form our beliefs. They help us form who we are inside. We look up to them. And whether or not you know those names, that's not what's important. 
but what is important is that there are people in your life that have helped form who you are. There are people in your life who help form who you are. So I think we all have personal saints. Um, it doesn't mean that, they, that you will find them in the Catholic Church on the stained glass window. You will not find my grandma up there. <laughs> you will not find um, one of my pastors growing up, Pastor Deck. You will not find his face in there. But to me, he was one that I always looked up to. Um, his name was Pastor Ron Deck. He passed away earlier um, this year, actually. And what I so appreciated about him was that not only did he have strong theological beliefs that I could always come to him, and but he was always gentle. He was never, you know, you must, you know, believe this or else. You know, he he was never degrading. He was never humiliating. He was always very gentle in the way that he addressed you. And it might have, it might be something you need to hear, but it was firm, but it was always done in love. And he was one of the first people that ever saw a call to ministry in me. And he's the one that got me started on track. He helped me start getting out um, the course for ministry, um, all these things that I don't think most high schoolers are usually are interested in. Um, he had me read like the Upward Call and these call to ministry books while my other friends were like, I don't know, whatever they were doing. <laughs> so um, it was a little, um, not what my friends were doing, but it was cool to me that he took the time to start developing that in me so that when the time came, I was prepared to face things in ministry. And he even let me run events. I was like 16. <laughs> like, whoever let me run events at 16, uh, so I love you, Pastor Dick. That was crazy. <laughs> um, but all he did, I, and like, it was kind of a crazy night. Um, it did not go well. <laughs> but all he did the next day was we were in his office and he was just like, so, how do you think it went? And I was like, well, this, 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 and then this, this, this. And he's like, mm-hmm. Okay, so you're going to plan the next one, right? <laughs> I was like, oh, you're not going to, like, scold me for not doing this or that or this or that. He's just like, well, you know, you know now, so let's move on. And I really so appreciated that about him is that he didn't kind of, you know, pin you down. He was like, um, you know, you know what needs to happen, so let's move on. He was so gentle. And um, Auntie Linda um, Deck, if you are watching this, hello, miss you and miss your husband, your sweet husband. So there's people like that that are personal saints to us, people that we look up to. They're not God. They're not um, inhuman, right? They're going to make mistakes. There's going to be things that you're like, mm, I don't really agree with that, you know, or they might even have a moment of anger. They might have a moment of they're not acting godly, a moment, but their whole life gives you the full story of who they were committed to, of of what kind of life they wanted to live and that was rooted in God does anyone here want to take a minute and share one of their um, personal saints share about one of your personal saints could be an auntie or an uncle grandma grandpa mom dad yeah I wanted to um, I came from I came from Oahu and the church that I was going to was Lanakila Church. Now it was <clears throat> founded in the 1947. It was started off on a small cottage and we got our own church. So we have a branch church. Uh, I'm not outside of the harbor. So anyway, uh, when I was growing up, I can still imagine me walking to preschool with my white dress. Anyway, getting back to whom his name is Reverend Charles Tang. So as I grew in the church, when I got older to know the word. So when I be, when I became 18, I committed to follow Jesus and became baptized Amen. and all that. And to know him. I was confused. I was confused on a revelation, but now I know the understanding. But what I wanted to say, his name is Reverend Charles Tang. His grandmother was one of the farmers when we had.
Catholic Church. Started off. Okay, so when he became pastor, so I guess I was a youth at that time, just still learning God's word. Every time he held a service, and it was a message about change, right? The message was always about change, remembering God's words and all that. Correction. So he picked a a reading that was that he prayed for and then the following week would be another verse the following week would be another verse but it would be all pertaining about changing the message was always the same so he would tell us that it was a message it was very important to take heed in the three message because it, it was coming to him three times and he even mentioned it. And I wanted to share that when he gave the word, it was like Jesus. It was, I felt like it was Jesus. And even our other members, as we get together after church, like, right did you feel that? Yes, I did. I feel like Jesus was talking to me only. The pastor was just talking to me only, but of course he's spreading the word, yeah. So, Again, uh, we so when we built the church in Mali, somehow our associate pastor became the pastor in Mali. It was like the story of Moses. Mm -hmm. How awesome and amazing, you know, our pastor who, oh, he was, he was chosen to do the work there. But as the church was built and was done, everybody from Honolulu went to, all my boys was young. Mm -hmm. And we all went fly, we got tickets, blah, blah, blah. We, we celebrated. We had a big luau and all that. Of course, our pastor was getting old. But he, he uh, like I said, our associate pastor is now there. You know, running the... So I just wanted to share that. Thank oh, you for man. sharing yeah. about um, Reverend King. You mentioned Reverend him. Reverend Charles Ripley. <laughs> yes, yes. We have time for one more, yes. I'm very grateful for my grandmother, my mom's mom. I think it's because she was a, a Christian in action, and she knew scripture. And when I was a child, to me, that was like amazing, that she would know scripture. She always made sure that we, as children, got to church. And um, she just lived a Christ-like life. She had so much pain in her life. Back in the 1920s, she lost two children within one year to whatever the illnesses were back then. And then her oldest son contracted polio. And then um, her husband died young, at, uh, right around the same time as the polio son. It was just like, she, but she never acted heavily burdened. She was always a delight and a giver and a lover of people and um, I think without her in my life, I might not have, who knows, but I I know that she was a reason for me seeking the Lord as a child. I would actually go to church by myself at, after a while. I would walk to church. The rest of my family would stay home and watch cartoons and eat biscuits and gravy, but I would get myself to church because my grandmother was such a great example. I, I hope to be that to my grandchildren. Amen. What was your grandmother's name? Her name was Mamie Zenobia Cook. Her married name was Wietrich. Mamie. Aww. Isn't that a great name? Grandma Mamie. Yeah. yeah. And Reverend Tang. And um, for me, it was Pastor Deck. And I have several family members that I look up to as well. What, What is the common theme in all of these giants, these spiritual giants, these spiritual saints that we have? There's a lot of saints is the saint of everybody, right, is Jesus. And I'm not saying that he is a saint um, as far as um, the way we hear saint today, but I mean, he's a saint in that he is the ultimate example of holiness. He is the ultimate example of being compassionate, the ultimate example of how we are to live our lives. And to be a spiritual giant, um, I noticed that when you were describing your spiritual saints and and jesus this is how um, our spiritual saints behave 
Um, just like in the passage, Jesus humbled himself. He didn't have to wash feet. That was a servant's job. So that was why Peter was like, excuse me, why are you washing my feet? That's not your job. That's so-and-so's job. Hey, come here. <laughs> Stop making Jesus do your job. <laughs> you know? um, but that Jesus said, no, no, I'm going to do this. Saints meet the person at their level. They don't say, oh, well, maybe, um, Peter, maybe if you weren't a fisherman and you were like a lawyer instead, you can hang out with us. But Jesus didn't say that. Jesus met Peter where he was. He met every disciple where they were and said, come follow me. He didn't say, go get right. He said, just come on, leave your stuff. Let's go. He meets them where they are. Amen. He even lifts people up above. And that's even what Jesus did by washing feet. Not only did he humble himself, by humbling himself to wash feet, he said, no, you matter more right now than me the son of god knelt down and washed some random disciple some random human in the eyes of god right the son of god knelt down and washed a human a lowly human's feet they lower themselves and lift others up oh, yeah. and then lastly over all of this they treat people with dignity um, there was, um, there's so many stories of Jesus showing people dignity that didn't normally get dignity in that time. Um, it could have been, you know, the paralyzed man. It could have been the woman caught in adultery. He never said, well, what'd you do to get here? Right? He never said, um, hey, sorry, you've been sitting there so long. Uh, you want a cushion? Like, he, he didn't say that. He treated them with dignity like they were people. And Pastor Tom talked about that last week, about people that are normally marginalized, people that normally don't have a face, you don't normally see them. Jesus looked them in the eye and gave them dignity. And it wasn't it wasn't sympathy or it wasn't pity. I think sometimes we get a difference between oh those poor people here, you know, here whatever you need. It was you're my friend and I take care of my friends. And that's the difference. And um, that's what Jesus did. He treated people with dignity. Like they were equals. I can't believe the Son of God would treat other humans like equals. I feel like that'd feel like you're below. That's below you. You know, <laughs> could be because you can make that human do whatever you want, <laughs> right? But instead, he he embodied who God was and met them where they were. There's more things to become a spiritual giant, but those were the four things that stuck out to me. And um, the people that we know, the people that we mentioned today, we look up to them because they humbled themselves. They didn't make themselves seem like a big shot. They humbled themselves, made them lower than what they were worth. And not be, not to degrade themselves. I think there's also a difference with, with Christians. It's not that we think of ourselves less. It's that we think of ourselves less does that make sense I know I said the same thing it's that it's not that our self-esteem goes down it's that we don't think of ourselves as often we don't come first anymore others come first God comes first and so when we are asking God to be a part of our life when we are asking Jesus to be the example for our life it's not that our worth goes down because you are highly valued. You are highly loved by God. But he doesn't want you to make that status higher than anybody else. He wants you to see the full value in whoever you talk to. You guys are equals talking to each other. And you meet them where they are. And um, I had to learn this at school with kids. Um, I learned very quickly that just because you start teaching a lesson it doesn't mean they're all ready to hear it. Um, they might be at different levels. And I had some kids, they were like at high school level already. So I had to scramble and find harder stuff for them to work on. I was like, oh, I didn't know you knew this already. And then I had other kids who <coughs> could hardly read a paragraph. And I was like, oh, you need something a lot simpler. So I had to, I had to kind of tweak the same message 
to tailor to each child as they needed it. And that's the same way that we should be to each other. Some people aren't ready to hear this theological discussion, which sometimes they are, but sometimes they aren't, you know, and you got to know who you're talking to. You got to meet them where they are. And that's what Jesus did. Jesus didn't come to the people in need and be like, oh, did I ever tell you about the time that, you know, God created? And did you ever think it was 24 hours? Or do you think it was, and the guy's just like sitting there like, I'm just hungry, dude. <laughs> um, Jesus, Jesus didn't smack people with the Bible first. He addressed them where they were. He met them at their need first. And then they were ready to hear what he had to say. And then again, he lifted other people up. And that's what our spiritual giants do, our spiritual saints do as well. They lift people up. When Father Damien came, he didn't want to go when it was time to go back home. He wanted to stay. He wanted to stay with his friends in Molokai because he loved them. They were friends. He was not, I'm their pastor. I'm here to give to the people. It's, these are my friends. They are, their life is worth more than mine in my eyes. And that's why he stayed. And then finally, treating people with dignity. And I've already talked about that. All of these things, all of these spiritual giants aren't in our lives to just make us feel good. Um, it's easy to be like, I am, I am blessed. And we are. Don't, don't say, Pastor Jeremy said, don't be blessed. That's not what I said. Pastor Jamie says, just because you're blessed, or when you are blessed, because you are, when you're blessed, you have a responsibility. You have a responsibility now to be that saint to somebody. Somebody's looking up to you whether you're knowing it or not, whether you have kids or not, whether you have nieces or nephews or not, whether you have grandkids or not. There's people in this church watching you for what Christ is like. There's people in this world watching you to know what Christ is like. And it's up to us to, first of all, honor that memory or honor that person who spent so much time pouring into us, but also more importantly, it's our job to reflect Jesus to those around us. Because without Jesus, we wouldn't have our spiritual saints. We wouldn't have the life that we have. And ultimately, that's what it comes down to is gratitude, in our Savior, gratitude for our um, salvation, wholeheartedly accepting what Jesus has done to us, or done for us, and and being willing to live that out in our world today. Amen. So, um, as we finish up, we're going to be finishing up with communion today, and those who are um, helping with communion, you guys can go ahead and start um grabbing those items um, while we're grabbing communion items and we're getting ready um, I wanted to talk about a song I'm only going to sing a little part of it but I wanted to sing a little song um, that if you're older or you've been in the church a while you probably know this one um, it's called um, made all who come behind us find us faithful and I think it's appropriate for us today to remember that you know, there are people that have walked in front of us, or there's people whose shoulders we're standing on to be where we are today, and it's our job to pass that on. And so, um, the chorus, there's a bigger verse, a bigger song to it, but the chorus is, um, Oh, may all who come behind us find us faithful. Um, I was listening to it today, it's been a while. Oh, I guess I have to sing it. Oh, may all who come behind us find us faithful. Do you know what? You can sing along because I need your help. <laughs> oh, may those who come behind us light, well, light our way. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, may, may the, the footprints, footprints that we leave lead them to believe and something inspired them to obey. I know, I didn't, should have written these down. Um, <laughs> oh, may all who come behind us find us faithful. Okay, you should look it up now because I totally butchered it. But you should look it up. YouTube. And I know, <laughs> yes, YouTube is amazing. 
But I love that song because even in the verses, it's talking about all of the spiritual giants in our life. They have laid down that foundation for us to walk on. And it was for us to walk on, first of all. And then also it, was, it came from God. It wasn't from them, it was from God. And so um, as we pray and get ready for our communion, um, I just ask you to bow your heads as we remember um, who, who is the foundation of this life and who our um, spiritual saints have depended on. Dear God, thank you so much for the spiritual saints in our lives. As we remember today of those who have impacted our life, help build up us where we are. Um, I pray that you would give us the courage, give us the bravery, give us the, um, the confidence to live that out in our life today. Um, may we not just do it because we want to be good people, but, but God, I pray that we would just do it because we love you. And because we love you, we want to reflect who you are. Help us to remember that none of this is possible without your sacrifice. And may we remember that as we um, participate in communion today. Amen. Amen. Yeah, Prepare your hearts as we uh, prepare to take communion. Um, I haven't preached for four weeks. I'm not going to preach now, but usually on vacation, somebody asked me to preach, but I decided this time that I was just going to try to relax and and get much needed rest. And so it's dangerous to give me a mic, but uh, no, I won't take too much time. But um, it doesn't matter if you're a member of the church or not, as long as Jesus is your savior. Yeah you can participate in communion. And as we prepare for communion, I have a few, a couple different stories, uh, really short, that I want to talk about. I don't know how many of you guys um, have seen the news lately, but um, I think it was either yesterday or day before, a young man was rescued by a Navy SEAL team. How many of you have knew that? Yeah, this young man was taken. I don't know all the details. I believe he's Christian. Um, maybe he was there sharing God's word, but he was taken, taken hostage in Africa. And um, he really probably, I can imagine, had very little hope. And then the Navy SEALs went in, and yesterday they rescued him. And um, I just want you to think about that, keep that in your mind. Also, I like to read a lot, and I, I read everything. I read a lot of theological stuff. I read a lot of news I like to read and be informed, and um, yesterday I was reading that, how many have you guys have ever heard of COVID-19? <laughs> Some of you have. Oh, you mean the so I read yesterday, yes. I read yesterday that right now there are 11 vaccine companies that are in the final stages of um, maybe some of those are going to um, have a vaccine for COVID, yeah, that people are going to be able to take and develop antibodies. 11 right now that are about ready to say we have a vaccine. I also read that they said that those vaccinations, those vaccines would be effective around in around 60%, 60% of the uh, people that take the vaccinations. That's their goal, 60 to 70, but probably around 60. And they also said that approximately 51% of humanity would take the vaccination, and that would you know, start to open things back up. Now, I thought about those two stories, and um, the one with the young man that was taken hostage in a foreign land. I don't know what happened to him, if he was beaten. I, we can only imagine what he went through. But we know at the very least he went through a lot of fear. And he probably didn't have a lot of hope when he was being held. 
But then the seals came in and they paid his ransom. Now they paid it probably with force. But it delivered him from his captors. It gave him life. And, and I thought about the vaccination and that humanity, for the most part, puts our hope in this man-made vaccination against a virus that we can't see that affects part of us, but not all of us. And it's 60% effective for those who take it, which sounds not that great to me, but maybe it helps with herd immunity. And then as I uh, listened to the service and worshiped along with you, um, Pastor Haoli led us in the song, Nothing But the Blood of Jesus. And I realized and recognized that the only vaccination that really is 100% effective is the blood of Jesus. Amen. Think about that. And uh, just like the vaccination for COVID, not everybody's going to opt to take the blood of Jesus. Yeah, There's going to be people that reject Christ outright. They're going to say, it's not for me. I don't believe in it. But it doesn't make it any less effective. It's still 100% effective for those who believe and accept the free gift of salvation, who, who allow his blood to pay our ransom. Amen. And that's what we need to think about as we prepare for this communion. The price that Jesus paid, the effectiveness of of his salvation, his gift, his sacrifice. Yeah. Now, we're in chaotic times and the world's in chaos right now. And it's maybe manufactured partially, um, you know, political or whatever um, forces are moving us into this chaos. It's not fun. It's not enjoyable to see. Over 2,000 years ago, the world was in chaos. And the disciples were right in the middle of it. And, and they were following Jesus, who was talking about God's kingdom come. Who was talking about going to the cross, going to the grave, that he had to die. Could you imagine the chaos they felt in their heart? They were living in person the greatest change in history. And it was violent. And it was passionate. And it was chaotic. And I can imagine when they went to the upper room and all of these, everything was just swirling around them. Things were moving so quickly that they couldn't really uh, understand what was happening completely. And Jesus brought them up. They knew it was the Passover. They knew that people were out to kill Jesus, that they were in the midst of the lion's den, so to speak, in the middle of Jerusalem, where the Pharisees and the scribes and the the leaders of the day were. And Jesus said to them, okay, okay, boys, this dinner is for you. This meal is for you. And he took the bread and broke it. And he said, this bread represents my body. It is my body. It's broken for you. Take and eat this in remembrance of me. In your hands, you have a symbolic part of Christ's body broken for you. Take it and eat it. And after they'd eaten the, the bread, he poured out the wine. And I guarantee you their, their focus was laser sharp right on him as he poured that wine. He's talking in a way that they'd never heard before. And probably without looking up, he said, this wine represents my blood. It is my blood poured out for you. Take this and drink it in remembrance of me. You have a cup in your hand that represents the blood of Jesus. Take it and drink in remembrance of him. But this isn't just symbolic. We, we, we go through this communion at least once a month. It's not just symbolic or symbolism. This act of worship, is, which is what it is, is a means to God's grace. 
And when we do that, and when we calm our spirit and we focus on Him, He's able to minister to our soul in a way that we can't really explain. But we know it's Him. So amidst all the chaos that's that's in the world today and that's guaranteed to come, because Jesus said it will, church, remember Him. Embrace Him. And remember that his blood is our vaccination against sin, Amen. which gives us eternal life. Amen. Let's pray. And after we pray, Pastor Oli's going to... I'll pick it up. He's going to um, sing, and I just encourage you guys to bow your heads, to remember the sacrifice that Jesus made for you. Take time to thank him to uh, allow his peace to surround you and to remember that nothing but the blood of Jesus will ever do. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we praise you. We thank you for your love for us. We thank you that you have paid our ransom, that we have life because of you. We thank you for your blood, which was shed, which had to be shed for us that the only way to the Father was through your blood and that your blood was sufficient for our sins to cover our sins from the beginning of time to the end of time Lord help us to live our lives in a way that people will know that we're different that there's something about us that people will be drawn to us because chaos doesn't rule but we have a peace in our heart that can only come from you, from your Holy Spirit, who lives in us. Help us to remember, Lord, all that you've done. Thank you for the saints that have come before us. Thank you for those saints here at Puganaz that are impacting the lives of their families and their friends. Lord, help us to remember you in all that we do. We love you. We give you all the glory. In your heavenly name, amen. Amen.
in you Jesus we rejoice in you Lord in your love for us help us to live there abide there remain there Lord and never leave Lord and stay close to you Lord live in your light Lord oh, mahalo Lord for all that you did for us Lord Help all my brothers and sisters, Lord, to enter into your presence through your blood, Lord. By faith, Lord, with gratefulness, with thanksgiving in our hearts, Lord, we enter your cross, Lord, your room, Lord, your throne. Oh, mahalo for Jesus, Father. Mahalo for Jesus. Mahalo for Jesus, Lord. Your son. Mahalo for him. We stay with you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, church. <laughs> 